Oh boy, I am so freaking excited for this package that just arrived. Oh yeah, Silver Picker here and blah 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 blah. I'm too excited even for my own intro. But basically, what is inside this package are some old Magic the Gathering cards from way back in the early 90s. These are ultra rare and super valuable. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's okay. I'm gonna explain it in a little bit. And as you saw by the title of this video, yeah, I'm trading some of my real silver bullion and I'm talking lots of it for some pieces of cardboard. And if you're scratching your head thinking that Silver Picker has lost his marbles, well, hopefully by the end of this video you'll understand why I'm doing it and what the heck I'm talking about. And if you don't know anything about magic cards or don't know anything about Silver Bullion, well, don't worry, I'm gonna explain everything. But what I really wanna do is open up this package, take a look at the cards that he sent me because I still have no idea specifically what's in there, make sure that they're authentic, and then explain to you all why I want them and what I think the future of alternative investments such as magic the gathering cards is gonna be. Anyway, enough with the jibber jabber, let's crack into this package. All right, so we have this package here. I actually opened it up already just because I wasn't 100% sure what it was when it arrived, but I did not actually look in the package yet. I feel the cards. Feels like there's one, two, three cards. And here we go. Yo, look at that. Wow. Now, for those of you watching who don't know anything about Magic the Gathering cards, this probably means nothing to you. But this is what's called a revised Tundra. Revised meaning the set that it came from. You can tell that from the white border. And Tundra being the name of the card, which you can see over here. Now, you're not going to believe that a little piece of paper like this could be worth so much. Now, I have to double check what the prices are now, but I think that this card in the right condition is worth probably north of 500 US dollars. That's right, 500 buckaroos. Look at that. Now, if you're not into Magic the Gathering, I still think this is a valuable video because, hey, if you're watching my channel, it probably means you like to buy and sell, go to garage sales, pick and thrift, make deals, and this is just another thing in your bag of tricks that you can pull out when you have the opportunity and make some good money. So if you ever see Magic the Gathering cards and uh, they look like this, and you can tell specifically because the box here that has the description, it'll have two different mana symbols. That's what we call the, uh, the resources in this game. And you'll see sort of this like sort of groovy target dual colored uh, box and design over here. You see it alternates from blue to, to white, blue to white, blue to white, blue to white. And if you see these, these are literally worth hundreds of dollars no matter which one. There are 10 of them. So we have a Tundra. Let's see the next one. Wow, another Tundra, holy moly. If these are all four Tundras, I mean, that is phenomenal. I mean, that's, that's like literally like 500 bucks each. I'll put the values right over here so you can see. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is a legit expensive card. I already saw a sneak peek of the next one. This is what the back looks like. This is on the plastic, so it's actually still in excellent condition. Next up, we have a Scrubland. It's the same one, but this one is black and white. Instead of blue and white, you can see the difference, right? Blue, white, black, white. And the last one, I, I thought there were three, but there are four. Nice, a Badlands. Nice, this one is black and red. Obviously, you can see. Ooh, this one is in rough shape. This one is in rough shape. Let's take them out of the plastic and see what they look like up close. Um, there are a ton of huge opportunities in Magic cards right now because aside from the fact that the game is more popular than ever, um, the cards, uh, they've just, collectibles in general have just gone up in value like crazy. And this is no exception. And these ones, which are no longer printed, right? Tundras, and these are called dual lands, by the way. These are revised dual lands, but they also have ones that are from Alpha, Beta, and Unlimited. Uh, Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, and Revised are the four sets that they printed these in. And there's just not that many out there. This one is in excellent, excellent condition. Look at that. And I'll show you how we authenticate them in a little bit after uh, we just take a look. Um, yeah, that one's in amazing shape. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of fakes because when cards go up into the you know two hundred to one thousand dollar range, and these range in that uh, price range depending on which one it is and depending on condition, you're going to see a lot of fakes coming out of China. Fortunately for collectors and investors, the uh, the fakes are not that good. Some of them are very good, but for the most part, they're not that good. Now I have clean washed hands, by the way, so 
We don't have to worry about me damaging these cards. Wow. Yeah, this is, uh, these are in excellent shape. I would say light play to near mint. That is awesome. Now, one of these Tundras is definitely going in my personal collection. I already have a Badlands and a Scrubland, so I may end up uh, reselling these. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, we shall see. Maybe I'll just hold on to them as like a speculative investment. So these two, pristine condition, really, they're gonna fetch top dollar. You already see the prices here. I have to do some, uh, some more research. That's why I, as I film this, don't know the exact prices. This one has a little bit more wear on it. I don't, I don't know if you can see, but it actually has like kind of uh, like some staining over here. I don't know if you can see that. You can see that's a little bit, it's got almost like a, a residue on it. And the reverse, this is actually considered a damaged card. So this is not even heavy, heavy play. There is a crack on the back, so that's gonna affect the value quite a bit. If this was in mint condition, it would probably go for about, I would say $300, maybe 250. I'm not sure the exact prices, um, but with this damage, it's going to be significantly less, unfortunately. Uh, you can see there's a lot of scuffing and uh, staining here, but the real damage is that crack. So you have to understand that just like coins, these cards will change value dramatically based on the condition. All right. Now again, for those of you still watching, uh, I am going to be showing you the coins that I am going to be trading for these cards as well. Badlands, looks pretty, oh, actually it's got this weird like residue, like almost like a stain. It looked good from, from one angle, but then with the light, it's, and I can actually feel it. It's almost like, you know what it feels like? It feels like this was kept in a old fashioned photo album, you know, where it has like the yellow, uh, the yellow adhesive, that's exactly what this looks like. I bet you somebody had this in like a photo album at one point. You can see it has like adhesive on it. You can see that staining right there. That's a shame. Yeah, and the reverse also damaged. So again, like heavy play would be, you know, it basically ranges from damaged, heavy play, moderate play, light play, uh, near mint to mint. Um, you know, it's similar to like the grading scale of coins, but uh, damage is when there's actually like, you know, this is like a chunk of the card missing right there. Like it's not just a scuff, it's actually like a tear. So creases and tears can, are considered damaged. And this looks like it might even have some water damage over here. So this one's also not gonna be top dollar, um, unfortunately, but still, hey, dual lands are still rare. It's like, you know, you find like a Morgan silver dollar that is, you know, in rough shape. like. At the end of the day, it's still a Morgan dollar. It's still gonna have like significant value. It's just not gonna be as nice as these pristine Tundras. Now that we've seen the basics of these cards, let's take a quick look to see if they are indeed authentic and then let's move on to the coins that I'm going to be trading for them. But before we do, let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Otis. Otis is really cool because it's essentially a stock market for cultural assets where almost anybody can buy and sell shares of collectibles and art and they already have over a hundred different items on their platform today, but they're adding new assets every single week. Basically, Otis enables ordinary people like you and me to own collectible assets that we probably wouldn't be able to afford on our own. For example, this 9.2 graded number one X-Men comic book that's worth over $135,000? Well, today on Otis, you and I can purchase shares of that for just 75 bucks. For each asset on the platform, you can also view the quantitative financial data as well as the qualitative cultural data that explains why this is such an important collectible. And that will help you make the most informed financial and investment decision that you can. Now, Otis is really, really simple to use. You just download the app, set up an account, and then you can start purchasing right away. You can buy shares of items that are already on the platform from other members, or you can wait until the new items are released in what Otis calls drops and purchase shares directly from them right when they come out. Either way, you can then resell those shares to other members, or if Otis liquidates any of the underlying assets, you receive the cash value of those shares. Now, Otis doesn't currently have any coins or magic cards listed, but they have some really, really cool stuff, including this Nintendo World Championship cartridge, a holy grail item for any video game collector, this pre-first edition Charizard Pokemon card, and you know I really like the unusual stuff, this Dwayne The Rock Johnson 
football card from when he played college football. I'm super excited to see how these drops do when they come out in a few weeks. Otis is definitely worth checking out. And if you are interested in trying it out, download it from my link in the description box below. And when you fund your account, you'll get your first share free. You can't beat that. Now, thank you very much, Otis. And let's get back to those magic cards and see whether or not they are authentic. So there are several different ways to test to see if a magic card is legitimate or not. And some of them are very similar to coins. One of which is weighing them. Magic cards from each set weigh slightly different amounts, but magic cards from the revised edition, which these are all from, should weigh somewhere between 1.7 and 1.8 grams. 1.72, that checks out, passes the first test. 1.7978, passes the first test. 1.73, Passes the first test. This is all really, really good signs so far. And the Badlands, 1.81. That's still within like normal range. And I bet if I like tap on it a little bit, zero it out, I might be able to get it to, uh, to actually still be within the correct range. There we go. Yeah, I just had to zero it out, 1.76. These are all very likely authentic. So they've all passed the weight test, excellent. Now, there are a couple of other tests, and I'm not 100% sure they are going to show up on camera. Let's see. The first test is, do they glow under UV light? Now let's turn off the lights and see. Now I'm not exactly in a dark room, but I'll still be able to see if it reflects the black light. Yeah, I mean, the camera's not able to pick it up that well, but these are definitely all like shining and glowing. Unlike a normal just piece of paper, like let's see if I can compare it to just this envelope I have here. The envelope kind of just looks like blue. I mean, the camera, again, it's hard to pick up on camera, but it just sort of looks blue. Here, it's like glowing. It's actually glowing. Very good, very good. Passes the second test, I'm very optimistic. Now, before we move on to the last test, if you are enjoying this video, please consider hitting the like button. It helps me out and it only takes you a second and it costs you nothing. I would really appreciate it. Hit the like button and while you're there, hit that big old red subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you never miss a video about coin collecting, precious metals investing, personal finance, crypto, or even alternative investments like Magic the Gathering cards. Now, let's move on to the last test. The last test requires a loop. Now, what we're gonna be looking for is what's called a rosette pattern. Now, let's see if we can get this on camera. Might be a little bit tough, might be a little bit tough, but a rosette pattern is basically part of the printing process. Yep, there we go. In the printing process, to the naked eye, this just looks like brown, right? But the way that they print it is they layer individual colors over it by printing lots of little dots. There we go, you can see that. Look how nice that is. This is a perfect rosette pattern. Now, every single set of Magic the Gathering has a slightly different uh, rosette pattern. It's almost like a fingerprint. But if you compare a real card to a fake card, you will see the difference immediately. So that's the rosette pattern. One other thing that we look for is you see in the sort of the light part of that blue dot, that big blue, uh, excuse me, the big green dot, in that light part, there are actually four little red dots all like single individual red dots in a little bit of an L shape. If you can see those, you've got a legit card. Now the final test with a loop is we are going to look at the lettering. Now one thing you notice is that we see the rosette pattern here as well, right? On the, the, the black and on the red, but on the type, there's no rosette. The type looks almost as though it was printed over everything else. Well, that's exactly what you're looking for you are looking to see that because the way that this, these cards were printed is that first they printed the color and then they layered the black over it. So if you look at the mana symbol, that's the red mana symbol and the black mana symbol, they are printed over the rosettes. They are printed over the rest of the card. So this is absolutely a legitimate card. Now, I don't wanna waste your time, so I'll check the rest of these off camera and I'll get back to you in a second and let you know whether or not they were legit. All right, I'm just checking out the last card. This is, of course, the Tundra, one of the Tundras, and it all looks good. Yes, every single one of these cards is indeed legitimate, and I am super stoked because I'm going to add one of these guys to my collection and potentially either trade these three away or sell these three for a little bit of a profit. Now, 
what you've all been waiting for. Let's see what I am going to trade the gentleman who sent me these. What am I going to trade him in silver? He asked me to put together an awesome grab bag and he said mostly silver stuff, but he's into other stuff as well. So uh, let's see what I'm going to give him. All right, so what we have right here is a massive pile of coins, silver, gold, precious metals, all sorts of other stuff that I'm going to be trading for those Magic the Gathering cards. Now, you probably are looking at this and think I'm absolutely insane because you can see here already, this is a ton of stuff, but those cards are really, really valuable. And in an effort for me to sort of diversify my portfolio of alternative investments, I'm actually trying to buy more Magic cards and uh, I have a massive, massive silver and gold stack, a pretty extensive coin collection. So I'm okay with diversifying a little bit and exchanging some coins and precious metals for these magic cards. Now, it's not like this is a new game, right? It's not like Magic the Gathering. Now, while I'm uh, explaining this, I'll, I'll sort of start to sort this stuff out and then we'll go through it one by one. But it's not like Magic the Gathering is like some new game that you know is just starting, but instead, it is something that has been around for almost 30 years and those cards that you saw that I'm paying almost $1,000 for, I remember when I was a kid, those specific cards were going for 10 bucks a piece and they just keep going up and up and up as the game gets more and more popular, as the cards get rarer and rarer and there is some speculation that each of those cards that I showed you will be worth over $1,000 each in the near future. So I'm open to taking the risk. I know it's a risk. I know that this is something that has been around for hundreds or thousands of years when it comes to the actual precious metals. And I know that I'm taking a risk, but I'm going to do it. And uh, let's see what you guys think in the comments section. Anyway, let's take a look at all the stuff that I am going to be giving him. So first off, I'm in no particular order. Let's just go through some of these coins. So we've got ourselves a proof 1979 S dime. He said that he wanted to, this guy John, who I'm doing the trade with, uh, said that he wanted to start a typeset and he's interesting to, interested in all sorts of different uh, American and foreign coins and predominantly silver. But I'm going to be showing off all the stuff I'm giving him. V-Nickel, this one is pretty sweet for his typeset. It's a three cent silver from 1874. Now you'll notice a lot of this stuff are things that I got in grab bags or things that I bought in big collection purchases, but that's the fun of it. You get it, you take what you want from the, uh, the grab bags, you take what you want from the collections you purchase, and then you pass them along to someone else and get other stuff that you want. Here we go, we've got a, uh, an XF Walking Liberty half, pretty sweet. A 1907 Indian Head scent, and this one has full liberty, and it actually has some original mint luster, which is pretty sweet. Um, now, John traded me these coins from his childhood, but, he and his daughter, Dianara, actually watch these videos together. So I want to give a massive shout out both to John and his daughter, Dianara, for uh, enjoying the great hobby of coin collecting and the investment of uh, silver and gold stacking. Pretty sweet, right? Another Walking Liberty. Threw in a really, really nice AU uh, steel scent. Again, I'm trying to help them build their typeset. But also, because we've got about $1,000 to work with, I'm able to give him some pretty awesome stuff. Clad Eisenhower with incredible eye appeal. I mean, there is not a blemish on this thing. Gonna be great for his typeset. Here we go. You might have seen this in a previous video. This is a Micro S 1945S uh, Mercury Diamond XF condition. So I'm also trying to give him some really nice stuff uh, in addition to the typeset and junk silver stuff. Really a way for him and Dianara to, uh, to really get a head start on an incredible collection. Of course, we got to go with a nice chunky piece of silver, one ounce of silver right here. It's a silver buffalo. I mean, this stuff that I'm going to be giving him is not a joke. I'm not just giving him a lot of junk. I'm giving him silver. I'm giving him type coins, uh, some graded stuff. Just kidding. This graded stuff uh, I bought recently. Uh, you actually might see it in a future video. I'm not sure what order I'm going to release them in. But these are listed as MS70 quarters, but they're really not because SGS is a total BS uh, grading company. You know, it looks all nice. They've got the holographic uh, case and everything. But the reality is, is you can even see if you just look at these coins, just based on eye appeal alone, you know that they're not Mint State 70. But they're still cool and they're still silver. And uh, I'm giving them to him, obviously, as you can see, at a very reasonable price. Some nice type coins. These also you will see, uh, you will have seen or will see in a future video. Check that out. This is an 1892 Barber Dime in phenomenal, phenomenal condition. I mean, you do not find these in most collections. 
in this incredible condition. This is one that will stay in John and Dianara's typeset for a very, very long time and will likely never be replaced because it is in such good shape. And I hope that when they look back at it in years and years and years, they remember the trade they did with Silver Picker and I hope that they enjoy it. Got ourselves a 1921S key date buffalo nickel. It is uh, nickadated, so it's lost some of its value, but still, it is a key date, so if they're doing a date set as well, uh, they are going to enjoy that. Now, let's get into some crazy silver, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten freaking silver quarters right there. That's ten freaking silver quarters right there, just to add right to the silver stack. Oh, you hear that? I love the sound of silver. And in addition to that, we've also got a bunch of these amazing Kennedy halves. Each one of these is a 40% half, and we've got one from each year, 65, 66, 67, and 68. And, of course, a 1964 90%er. There we go. There we go. All right. I did include, you know, I did include some little fun things uh, that were given to me in other grab bags. These I know are not worth a lot, but hey, you know, they still look pretty cool if you've got yourself like a little display that you're doing or something, got a little vial of gold flakes and of course this gold quote unquote $100 bill, you know, just a little throw in, just a little throw in. And while we're showing off the fake $100 uh, gold bills, which I sort of left a little off camera because they're not that important. I am including three Utah Goldbacks. I've got a 2019 $1, or excuse me, one Utah Goldback. Check that out. You guys know how big of a fan I am of Goldbacks. I am one of the first to have videos on Goldbacks on YouTube, and uh, I am really proud of that because they are an awesome company with an awesome product. Another one, and this one's from 2020. You can see here it's the 2020 version, so they've got one of each. and a five Utah gold back, also from 2019. Look at that. Look how gorgeous these are. These are absolutely phenomenal. And now they've come out with other states. They've got Nevada, they've got New Hampshire, and they're gonna be coming out with a whole bunch more with awesome designs. I'm a huge fan. You guys know I'm a huge fan. All right, now before we get into some more of the silver and coins, I decided to throw in a little uh, historical piece. This is something actually that my patron Jason gave me, but it doesn't really fit into any of my collections. These are World War II, I believe, gasoline rationing coupons, and I just thought that it's a really cool historical piece that I can pass along to uh, two collectors that may really, really enjoy them. Now, he said that he's mostly into coins and precious metals, but he would be cool with some banknotes as well. So I decided to give him a nice little starter collection of these uh, Blue Seal silver certificates. So we've got a 1935D, we've got a 1935E, we've got a 1935F, and a 1935G. Moving on, we've got a 1957, a 1957A, and a 1957B. So I wanted to give him a little bit of everything. We've got a $2 bill, Red Seal, United States note. Love these, they're so cool, especially love that reverse. Love how green it is. Ah, oh, you really just can't get enough of those. And I've got two more bills. One is just a modern $5 star note and a really old 1934C $20 bill. Check that out. How sweet is that? So, you know, not a huge, he's not a huge fan of, uh, of banknotes compared to precious metals and coins, but still, I mean, that is a special piece, right? Now, let's move along to some of the chunky silver. Look at that. You think, you think that it was just little bits and bobs? No. We've got ourselves a nice stack of silver coins. Let's check that out. We've got ourselves a 1925 piece dollar. We've got ourselves a 1922 piece dollar. Oop, let's save that one for a minute. Let's keep on going with the American coins. We've got ourselves a 1921 in spectacular condition Morgan silver dollar. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, we've got ourselves another 1921. We've got ourselves another 1922 piece dollar. We've got ourselves another 1922 piece dollar and yet another 1922 piece dollar. I mean, look at all that silver. So far, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven silver dollars just right there. And 
Let's get back to this. Another chunky piece of silver. This is a Mexican five peso coin. Beautiful, beautiful coin. I actually have another one of these, and that's why I was able to uh, give this one up. 90% silver. You can see it's 30 grams or 30 gramos. Pretty sweet. Okay. Now, in addition to that, I always like to expose people to the collections that I'm into, even if they're not like super into it. These are some of the only uh, non-silver foreign coins I'm putting in here, but these are British Mandate of Palestine coins, and these ones are actually pretty rare ones. So if they are interested in starting off a collection like mine, they will have a very good start. A two mil and a 10 mil coin, and these are really sweet. So if they wanna start a collection, they'll have it right here to start themselves off with. Now, two more awesome type coins. Check this out. A beautiful Standing Liberty quarter, 1927. This is the one that used to be in my type set and I exchanged it for one that's in slightly better shape. But look at that. This is an incredibly, incredibly nicely detailed coin. Beautiful silver coin and I bet it'll be a long time before they trade this one out as well. Additionally, a super clean, super beautiful war nickel. Look at that. Look at that mint luster on there. This is from the San Francisco mint and it is a 1943. Check that out. They are going to love those. I am sure of it. Now I'm going to save the best two for last, but I'll also show that I decided to give them my Canada Birds of Prey collection that I just received in a grab bag. This one came from a grab bag from uh, my grab bag exchange with one of my subscribers. Uh, excuse me, one of my patrons. And while I do love this, I realized that it takes up a lot of room and it doesn't really fit into any of my collections. And I've, I've become a little bit more uh, serious about keeping the things that I, that I want for collections and not just sort of like hoarding stuff. Because honestly, what I realized is that this would just sort of sit in a drawer. And as much as I like this, especially this owl, I cannot get enough of this owl. I realized that it would be better to go into a collection of someone like John and Dianara's because I think that they're going to be displaying it. It's a father and daughter collection type thing. And, and I think that this really deserves to be displayed and loved more than I would be able to. So I hope that they enjoy it. And, uh, and if they don't, that's the beauty of grab bags. They can always pass this along to someone else and fill their collection with things that they really are really into. So I do hope they enjoy this because this, this really is a special one that belongs in a, uh, a nice special home. Now, we've got one more Morgan over here, which is the 1870, excuse me, the 1887D, uh, and, or oh, excuse me, and it's, it's just kind of like a normal Morgan silver dollar, nothing too special, but here we go. The piece de resistance, this coin. I am giving them in 1878 Carson City Morgan dollar. That's right, Carson City Morgans are the creme de la creme. You see that there? See that little CC? Little CC right there under the bow? Carson City, Nevada, minted in the actual Wild West. These are the most desirable of all, of all Morgan silver dollars, and they are gonna have one for their collection. So check that out. This is like literally a, almost a thousand dollars worth of coins, precious metals, banknotes, bills. They've got a little bit of everything, and all they had to give up was four little pieces of cardboard. I know you think I'm insane, but I really do believe that those Magic the Gathering cards are going to appreciate in value quicker than a lot of these coins. And more important, even if some of these coins and the silver appreciate more than those Magic cards do, the truth is I am comfortable with the fact that I am diversifying my investments and also, I really like magic cards and it's something that I can play with and enjoy in addition to holding them sort of in my collection. So what I wanna know from you guys is who do you think got the better deal and what would you guys do? Please put it in the comments below. I think it's really important to hear from you guys about all of uh, these deals. And if anybody out there is watching that is interested in making a deal like this that wants to either trade for coins or for Magic the Gathering cards or precious metals, let me know. I'm open to it. So, John, Dianara, I really hope you enjoy this amazing collection of coins, and I really appreciate you uh, doing this deal with me. So, if you all enjoyed watching this video and enjoyed seeing this trade, please hit the like button, please like this video, and uh, give it a big thumbs up, and if you want to see more videos like this, hit that big old red subscribe button. 
I recently passed 100,000 subscribers. I'm working my way to a million so you guys can be the next and I can't wait to see you all there. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I've got a lot more awesome stuff coming down the pike. So stay tuned and until then, Silver Picker out. A huge, huge thank you to all of my wonderful patrons. You guys are amazing. A lot of you sent me some of these coins that I was able to trade for these Magic the Gathering cards, and I appreciate it so much. I know we're gonna have an awesome conversation, maybe even a heated debate in the Discord server. So if you're not yet a patron and wanna sign up, now's the time, and I can't wait to see you in the Discord.